working now? Okay, now we are. Greetings, Sim Captains, and welcome to this special first live edition of the Flight Brothers. Hey, it's Tim, and I'm Lee. And today we have something special for you guys. We got our hands on, thanks to my coworker, as it moves in frame, the Honeycomb, what is this, Alpha Control? Uh, well, let me see what Alpha they call Flight Control. Alpha Flight Control, much anticipated to the market. Tim and I both have been watching uh, some email websites for a couple years on its development. Um, Very yeah. excited. Um, so we're going to let you know how our first go with it went. And let's check it out. Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high quality aviation content and entertainment. And thanks to Kyle letting us borrow this. So we've done a temporary mounting solution here with some bungee cords and we really just didn't want to tear this up. We have some of the hardware here. Um, it comes with really heavy duty metal hardware for mounting it. Uh, there's a like Cat5 cable here. Not sure what that's for. I assume maybe for the Bravo. Again, since this is a loner, um, we didn't want to open up the manuals and destroy his stuff here. But, you know, he did did say we could borrow it. Here again is the mounting, uh, mounting plate that would mount underneath the yoke system. All right, so we figured you want to take a little look and see what all we've got here. Obviously, there is the yoke, which does have... Um, I don't want to call that force feedback. What what would? No, I think it's like. Kind what's of the a, resistance yeah, on there? Yeah, it's got a resistance like a spring tension. Maybe we'd probably have to look up in the literature to be right. Honest and we'll talk that. more about the feel of that in a moment. But right. uh, <laughs> this is where you know mounting does become important. Go ahead and pull it back there. Uh, back. This is a sliding tray. We have it bungeed to. So obviously, if you're going to buy this, you need to consider having a desk where there's room to mount it and uh, furniture right. solid enough to not pull over when you get excited and. Uh, back on the yoke and it is quite substantial uh, i don't know what this piece weighs but it's probably around the 10 pounds if i had to guesstimate uh i you know i'm not sure how heavy it is but it definitely feels solid right you know that there's that whole joke uh, if it feels heavy it's not cheap well it doesn't feel cheap guys it's got a good feel to it so let's run down what do we have here on the left hand side of the uh of the yoke on the yoke here so when it's hooked up default, do we want to talk about software now or do we want to kind of hold that? Because, yeah, later. Let's talk about what it's supposed okay. to be. So we've, we've got two switches here, which uh, generally would be used for an elevator trim. Yeah, elevator um, trim A and B. Yeah, right. you got your hat switch up here. Uh, what is that? Probably an eight position. Uh, it's quite a few. Got a button here on the back side. You've got a button that I could imagine it being used as a PTT All right, or a push to talk. And I'm going to avoid the camera shot, guys, because this room is an absolute disaster. Right, right. And I, you don't need to see all my messes. Sure, and then over here again, we've got these um, two position uh, momentary switches as well for uh, aileron and rudder trim as the default programming has it set, as well as another um, AP disconnect up here on red. And then I think these these two white ones actually on top are defaulted for flaps up and down, if I remember All correctly. All right, so that'd be very convenient uh, while you're flying. And then let's look at these switches. They're actually set up <clears throat> to mirror the uh, Cessna configuration, which is just perfect. So we're going to go back and forth. So uh, here, Lee, would you toggle just the uh, battery main? Okay. I, I actually uh, that master. Hold. Just do the master again. Okay. All right. And then let's do uh, our light switches. You can see. Oh, sorry for the bad camera work. Beacon, yeah, landing, sure. taxi, nav, and strobe. And these are going to mirror. I don't know. Do you want to show this? So anyway, you do... Uh, do a couple here, and then I'll okay. flip up to the screen. Go ahead, turn on the first one or two. Okay. And then you can see they're repeated, obviously, on the screen. Which I know you might be thinking, yeah, big deal. They set them up in the same order. But it makes it nice and intuitive because your eyes can be on the screen and your hands can feel it where it expected to be, with the exception of having a fuel pump on this and not on there. Yeah, sure. Uh, perhaps one thing that's a little bit backwards, our... Uh, Ignition key is on the left on the actual uh, Sim Cessna, and Honeycomb Alpha has it on the right. 
which will fit well for the V-Flight Air because the uh, Piper has it on the right side. Oh, that's perfect. Now, it does, I would say all of this has a substantial feel. It's not a, uh, I, I hope the sound is uh, as good in this video as it is in sure. real life. I mean, these Provided switches. Your hand's not covering up the microphone. Oh, yeah, this is possible. The switches <laughs> all click with a good, solid feel and sound like nothing about this device feels cheap at all i'm actually amazed what's the price point on this right now lee i, I believe retail on it is 249 through most vendors and uh, kyle said he bought it directly from honeycomb i know my pilot store is dot uh, com is selling it several real world aviation uh, retailers are selling it and then of course all your um your major online we distributors. We have actually seen uh, ads for it in none other than Flying Magazine, which is pretty, pretty good uh, sign that they're they're taking this product very seriously and targeting the, uh, you know, the real world flying segment of sim sure. pilots as well. And if I may talk about that, uh, Kyle, the, the guy that I borrowed this from, he's been flying I think almost two years on his private. He's got his tailwheel endorsement, and he bought this specifically so he could train for instruments. That's why he purchased this. And just just for fun, you can see we've got the, the on-screen yoke. And you can just see how nicely. Oh. Full lock to lock. That's another thing. I think it's almost a 180-degree uh, oh, worth of lock. That is 90s. perfect. Look at that. Yeah, we max out. Exactly. Right. And again, this is just a nice, okay, you're not going to be looking at your hands, but if you do leave the on-screen yoke up, it's going to visually reflect exactly what you are doing, which is uh, pretty nice. So let's talk about the, uh, the feel. Lee and I took it out and flew it. I actually crashed with it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the feel. We've got our replay running back here. And if you have super good vision, I'm going to apologize for the flaps being down for almost the entire trip. That was my job. <laughs> that was his, He had one job to do, and uh, that's what it was. Yeah, sure. Crew resource management fail. Which is a unique perspective to sim. Yeah, that doesn't happen because yeah. I'm sure most, most of, us of you fly by yourself. Anyway, okay, so back to the honeycomb. There's so much more to be said there. There is. All right, on to the honeycomb. We so, don't have um, enough memory. So for the uh, the actual feel, um, Lee and I were talking. I was the most recent of the two of us to be out in the Cessna and the uh, real world. By the yeah, way, real real Cessna. Yeah, sure. And I'm not a pilot. I was up with a friend, so I got the obligatory couple moments of uh, flew the plane. And uh, I will say, you know, okay, when when the plane's trimmed out and it's in neutral, you're in about this. Uh, sort of dead zone where there's, I won't say there's play in the yoke, like you have a car from the 1980s and the wheel doesn't control anything. Right, there's it doesn't just, do anything. Right, the uh, response of that uh, spring or whatever is in here is very limited until you get to about here and then you start to feel it and mm -hmm. it really does feel pretty authentic to, uh, you know, once the wings start to, to load up and sure. you get that little bit of feedback in your hands. So I think uh, for an at-home sim, it's going to be enough that you don't feel like you're just flinging around this cheapy wheel. It's, it's what makes most driving sims feel like absolute garbage. Is right. you know uh, most of us have driven real cars, and you play with this wheel, and you're like, "This isn't the real thing. This is trash." Yeah. But uh, I'm going to say it's all right, all right to me for my uh, limited flying experience in the real world well and we also should throw out there that we don't have anything to compare this to we have not purchased yokes we have uh joysticks that we've used for most of our sim careers thank you thrustmaster right and logitech, and logitech. Uh, <laughs> they've, they've gotten us through the years as well um, 35 dollars well spent right not not sponsored by the way but to go from the level of immersion I think that you feel when comparing a yoke to a joystick, especially when you're looking at it on on the screen, it's night and day. Maybe it's okay for an Airbus, but to actually have a yoke and sit there Maybe and to that 
You know what, an Airbus joke? I, I, I was coming in with it. I bet. So, anyway, back to this. Not having anything to compare it to, it may skew it. But uh, when I text Tim that that uh, my friend had let me borrow, or my coworker had let me borrow it, I said, this thing feels like it's worth two forty nine. Like, And I was trying to explain it to him over the phone. My only complaint, and this is a very minimal criticism, and I, I told Tim about this as well, is that what you're seeing on the Sims is kind of those heavier-duty metallic um, switches, right? The the battery and avionics switches are, like, freaking top-notch. I mean, you hear the, the clicks are sharp. They, they feel nice. They look nice. When it comes down to the landing lights, on the Sim, you see the heavier-duty metallic double-throw right. switches or whatever. This, they've gone with um, uh, plastic switches, but I, I don't know... The sound of them's okay. Yeah, it's got a good click to it. Right. But it's there I think it's maybe because they're either th so thin or because psychologically you're anticipating that larger switch. I don't really know. You go out to Radio Shack and swap them all out. Yeah, rip your brand new one. Actually, I wouldn't suggest that. I'm sure it's no. a fantastic product. It, it's not enough to make me do that. Uh, just an observation, I think. So everybody always, with any bit, bit of sim gear... The question is always, is it uh, is it worth it? And we always hesitate to to answer for you because who knows? So for my part, Lee brought this over, and my greatest fear was I would love it too much and then have to run out and order it the moment he left. And uh, we've overcome that fear so far because I like it. I mean, it feels... I'll be honest, as soon as I took it out of the box, Lee was in the other room. He's like, you have it out of the box, don't you? Because I was making... You can I was hear the making, excitement. Uh, I was making noises just like, oh, because it just feels right. Right. But um, Which do is... I feel like when I'm actually flying, like I have to have this or the experience is just not... Uh, not really. I mean, it's it's great. If somebody gave me one for, for Christmas, if my wife watches this, um, I, I'm not going to complain, but do I feel like I have to have it? No. But here's the interesting thing. The price? Right. I feel like it's pro it, it let probably me, worth more. And let me ask you something, and probably by the quality of this video comes out, this is unscripted. We're just sitting down and hit record. The idea popped into our head an hour ago, right? I just wanted to do it before we had to give it back. Right. There you go. There you go. Um, let me throw this question out here. If you were flying Cessnas with no autopilots, would that change your opinion of this? So all hand flying. All hand flying. Because so often in flight sim, right, we get on the planes, we throw them on the APs, so you really don't need that interaction. Let's say you're taking this airplane that's flying in the background now. All right, fair enough. That's a good question. Okay. I'm going to answer as though it was a year ago. Okay. In, uh, in 2018, I was flying every day, but now I have a newborn child in the house. So for the last month, I'm lucky if I fly once a week. Sure. Uh, I have to fight. For, I have to fight I for that relate. hour. Yeah, he's got a young child also. And um, but back in 2018, when I was coming home from work every day, planning a flight, jumping in the uh, the Zebo, uh, yeah, I I would have I would have definitely sprung on it because I would have used it a lot. Now that we're busy making videos. I'm flying different stuff every day. I actually, th this would likely make my video production a little bit more complicated. But if I was just flying for my own entertainment, especially mm -hmm. the Cessna. Right, yeah. Oh, oh Or actually even a Boeing. It's believable. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're going to use this primarily, well, let's talk about that. Zebo okay. users. If yeah. you're going to fly in this all Zebo, you would remap some of those switches? Like, probably leave the landing, uh, yeah. leave the light configuration. Yeah, you could leave the light to avionics masters, probably. Because it's really annoying to look at, you know, when you... Sure. You can say what's all you want about the realism, but when you're still grabbing the mouse and looking up. Unless you're doing it in VR. VR, I don't know how, uh, how that would work. Maybe we'll burn that bridge one day. It's going to be a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, so some things don't lend themselves to the airliner, like... The one starter with magnetos. Uh, there might be a sensible way to set that up, but you sure. know your airline starters, they auto kick back. It, it's just one of those that switch doesn't necessarily make your life better. So you might just disable that switch 
or set it up to do something else. And I believe the Bravo is going to be coming out this year, which is the uh, the, the throttle set for it, which has autopilot functions. Yeah. So that may change how you would use use this. And when the Bravo comes out and complements it, I got to be honest. It's going to be hard to say no. I'm more excited about the Bravo throttle quadrants. Can't speak today. That's okay. I, I wanted that uh, far more than the yoke. And uh, it might just because for years my throttle has been these little little sliders. <laughs> sliders. Yeah. And it's just. You know, there's nothing like starting a 747 at the immersion level than having an actual to push. Right. <laughs> there's something comical about taking this little slider and I'm like, full power, one inch force. There, there you go, there's 80,000 pounds of thrust or something. <laughs> it's, it's not convincing. It's not convincing at all. But this, um, for the feel, it's great. I guess one thing that it might not lend itself to, I mentioned earlier I crashed. On purpose. Um, yeah, it was it was not in this video, right? No, um, we've reset since then. But I was. Uh, You're gonna see a terrible approach here if we keep babbling on, was, which uh, is likely. And that's his fault. That's um, true. Sorry about the flaps. So, I was uh, attempting to roll the aircraft, just basically doing the most extreme maneuvers we could do with it, and uh, it wasn't recoverable because the altitude I was at, but. I will say, if you're doing really extreme motions, I'm saying this mostly because if you if you fly like trash on purpose, which occasionally I do, like I just grab something ridiculous and uh, yeah, not this guy. He takes it very seriously at all times. By the book. Uh, now, what what's that little thing? The little BD. What? The little BD. Oh, the BD-5? Yeah, the little BD-5. I'll little take that jet thing and go racing through the canyons in Arizona and something like that. So if you're doing things where you might be full deflection and trying to save your bacon by cranking on it, then um, this could be a little bit more challenging than you were expecting to need. Sorry, we had a little sneeze break in the video there. Yep, that had to happen. So I guess you kind of provided uh, what you thought. And I think... In my opinion, for for what it feels, again, we've we've had this. What do we do? One or two flights around the pattern, really. Mm -hmm. um, so, take that for what it's worth. I think the hardware for the money. I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think there's anything comparable for the money. Right, and I think as a. I think the is it worth it question is probably the hardest to answer. And I think that largely comes down to what type of flying are you doing? If you get the plane up, you throw it on autopilot and you go to work or the store and you're, you know, pounding your A380 from Australia to London. Sorry, our probably long not. Haul friends. Yeah. And, but however, comma, if you're the person who actually sits there and enjoys it or does the shorter flights with, you know, where you're actually using and touching this because the ergonomics on it are fantastic. Like when you lay your hand on the yoke, it's it, it's fantastic. Like it, you, you it won't really have any is, complaints about. Yeah, it. you won't have any complaints there. So I think the the whether you need to get it or not is up to personally how you fly. I think I would like to get one. Do I need to get one tomorrow? No, but would I like to have one? Honestly, I want that in the Bravo. Because if the Bravo feels as solid as this thing does, and you know, with the uh, twin, what is the prop uh, or the prop mixture throttles, and then it comes with um, jet. Should, should we talk about this a little bit? So, if you guys didn't Maybe. know, if you haven't seen it, go look up the uh, Bravo throttle quadrant. They have pictures of it; it's just not launched yet. Sure. But uh, it's going to have four throttle arms but they can six. be configured six it's it's six because you have two prop throttles two mixtures and two propellers for a twin however if you remove the caps your inboard and outboard slider could functionally become your that's what i've been seeing so your flaps and i think auto spoilers it has removable handles right. to go on so if you're <laughs> flying a zebo or an airbus you would maybe set the centers to sure. be your throttle handles. Sure. If you're on a 747, you're going to want them to have your four throttles uh, or an A380. Is there even a decent A380 in X-Wing? I don't know. Um, sure. And if 
But if you're in the twins, which I think is what most people are flying, honestly, right, yeah. then you're going to have your throttles, flap, and speed brake. Is that what it was? Yeah, I think. I don't think you would use your other ones. I think you could kind of move those out of now, the way. Now, I got an interesting question for you, and we don't have an answer to this I, right. unless Lee knows. Uh, for a throttle, you have a smooth range of motion. Mm. For flaps and speed brakes, you want uh, detents, mm -hmm. meaning it would be notched, so you'd feel it... Uh, Maybe like your your shifter in your car drive, you know, you feel that little click. Right. So you wouldn't have to look at it and be like, I, I, I think I, I got I it. I think we're at, let's call that flaps 12. Sure. So you, you wouldn't be a guesswork. Because again, the reason you buy an external peripheral is so that you don't have to sit and stare at it. You can generate that muscle memory right. uh, feeling like you do with your car that you drive every day or, or a real aircraft if you... Uh, or trying to train at home for some real flight that you do, and you're just doing this because it's cheaper for practicing procedures, etc. Sure. And I think to answer your question, I think it's probably going to be, I would imagine, like a visual notch or a sticker maybe. Or if you, like, as, as much as you and I flip back and forth between aircraft, mm -hmm. I'm not going to throw a sticker on there that says this is flaps 510, you know, or, or right. you know, 1, 2, 5, 10, whatever the case may be. You know, we're an Airbus one, two, three more landing. More toys, more problems. Oops, sorry about that. That was all me. Hold on. Kicking our mouth. Just, just wait. We'll just do a little reset. Pardon that little video earthquake. Uh, we just kicked our video mount. On purpose. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I was just saying. You know, one of the the crazy things with the flight sim is really sometimes the more. The more add-ons you get, the more problems you're going to have, whereas... Look no further than most forums, actually, on that one. Absolutely. But if you wanted to set up, like, let's just say in Fantasyland, you wanted to only fly the Cessna 172, because that's what... Probably the most ubiquitous private pilot aircraft out there. True. You could set up with the Honeycomb... Perfectly get a few other little peripherals. You might notice we have a little Garmin 430 box here. I mean, the, the equipment's out there and you can have a very nice setup. So we should probably wrap this up. But sure. but, but overall rating, what, what would you say? The honeycomb? Not, I not, personally, yeah, I love I, it. I'd definitely give it a thumbs up. I mean, it, it, it feels nice. It looks nice. Um, it doesn't feel cheap. I, I would say, yeah, for, for $249, I think, is what they're asking for. If, if this is what you're looking for, I'd say it's probably money well spent. You know, my, my other favorite thing about this is very popular it has a lot of buzz and it is just as good as what the advertising suggested okay and the price point is really very affordable if you look at what the average flight simmer is spending according to the surveys is that the navigraph survey that you're yeah. looking at yeah, yeah, yeah this this is within the yearly budget of most of uh the sim crowd and i really hope this will push other developers to make similarly high quality good feeling Good ergonomic uh, and attractive. It looks good. I don't know yeah. if you can see the lights. Hold on. Yeah, it's uh, actually backlit. Just, there. just for fun. Ooh, it glows. Well, that's whitewashed, but yes, it, you can see it glowing there. So I don't know if you can see the red. That was probably an unnecessary camera trick, but that's okay. Whatever. It, it's got a very nice glow, and I'm really hoping that the popularity of this product will drive the other peripheral manufacturers to make a uh, similarly high quality kind of and well-priced equipment. Yeah, up their game a little bit. Capitalism at work. That's it. All right, so again, uh, we're the Flight Brothers. I'm Tim. I'm Lee. And remember, plan the flight. And fly the plan. We'll see you next time.